Tim Blair here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about, yes, the Roman Gladius. Now I got it here on my belt, which you guys can't see it, but I guess I'll show it to you. That's the Roman Gladius. Now, this is an Eastern version style Gladius. And to have you guys know, let me give you guys a close up for you. Yes, and this is Damascus Steel Blade. So, pretty cool. Now, the thing about this handle is, as you can tell, the handle put grip here is kind of pinches into the hand. That's the only problem about it. Other than that, it's very lightweight. Perfect for cutting blows and good for thrusting. I can actually imagine you seeing this in the Roman Legion. <laughs> but yes, um, now this is the early version of a Roman Gladius before it was copied by Rome. In fact, this is, I guess, a Celt-Iberian version, I guess you might call it, or a, or a type of Mediterranean version. Because what I mean is, take a look at the handle. Yeah, these studs are here, and this is from Cult of Athena. I will leave a link for you guys down below if you guys want to do this for your Celt-Iberian combat. And yes, this is perfect for that cutting motion, but mostly best for thrusting. I love the I love the sword very much. I love the Damascus steel on this very much. It's beautiful. I'll get a little closer for you guys. Take a look at that pattern welding, guys. That is beautiful. This is why I love Damascus. Now the hand. Now there are three types of uh, swords like this on Cult of Athena. Two of them are carbon steel. One of them is made by windlass. The other two, like this one, is made from Devil's Edge. So I'll leave all three for you guys, whichever one you guys want to choose from. Me though, I went with the one with the scabbard and a baldric. But, yeah, that one's a little complicated. Anyways, shall we see it? I think we shall. Anyways, here's the baldric with the sword in the scabbard. Now, as you guys can tell, this is not a baldric. It, if you guys are going to go over the baldric, it has to come with these two areas on here. I got rid of that due to the problem, as you can tell, because upon wearing the baldric, if you have to have to use the baldric, you have to use it like this, which does look stupid, and it's kind of a little dangerous because of the fact I gotta draw my blade like this. I don't want to accidentally cut myself, especially in the vital aortas here around the throat, or as well, some people would even do this type of trick on having the sword on the back, which I don't like. Me, I'll just keep this on my belt, that way when it comes, because a lot of Roman legionnaires did do this with their swords, they just attached it to the belt, so I'll keep it like that. Now, cool thing about this, it does come with a type of strap piece, that way you don't lose the sword. Just listen to that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you guys can probably pass this up for a knife or something. In fact, I do know here in Texas, it is legal to carry something this big on the streets. Beautiful sword. But now, you can actually see this handle design, actually, in a video game. Yes, a video game. I don't like it as much as you. Uh, in a video game called, well, Assassin's Creed Origins. In fact, you can actually see it in a bron in a sword they call the bronze sword. And that bronze sword is a little big for for the historical liking. This is a historical accuracy of that type of sword. Short and durable. Made for thrusts and made for cutting blows. Now as guys also, the sword does come sharpened when you buy it. So in other words, you don't need to sharpen this. This is perfectly sharp enough to cut down your opponent with ease. Just imagine hearing this every time you take a swing. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can, and it's kind of terrifying. All we're pretty much I need now is a Roman glut, Roman armor and such. And pretty much I uh, uh, get you guys suited up for literally the Republican military. But yeah, the sheath is actually pretty cool. Design work. 
impressive. That is leather, yes. Not a Fuchs leather or one of those fake plastic leathers. But it's well another cool part of feature. Even has a fuller in the blade. This makes sure they actually reinforce the blade, making it also a little bit lighter for me to swing around. Now as well, it is technically still light enough for me to use it as a dagger instead of a sword. So I'd rather use this as a sword than a dagger any day. But technically I think I'd rather prefer calling this a knife. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty cool of a weapon. Now, as I stated, this little pommel end pinches into the hand. So what you gotta do is you gotta technically lever it in like so. Let me get that. What you gotta do is put it in. Technically, put your palm, the bottom end of your palm, on this opposite end. Otherwise, it will pinch in there. Now, what some people could do is actually just do it the other way around and put your thumb on the rivet end. That way, at least you still have a little bit more control of it. Because mine it came with a bad handle, as you always can all tell. No, don't mind that. That's just the information. Anyways, yeah, you can probably tell on how bad that handle looks when it looks a little lopsided crooked a little ways. But yeah, guys, this is my Roman Gladius. Hopefully you liked this video, guys. Subscribe, click the like button, and also comment on what other type of weapons you want me to talk about. If you guys want me to talk about the history of the Gladius, I'll be happy to do so. Anyways, guys, have a good day, and always remember to keep your swords unsheathed. Thank you.